In this video, I'm going to make a simple bike. Bra! It's going to be pretty cool. Now, there are a lot of ways of making a bike. I went with a very simple approach. I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. We're going to do the animations for his for his legs, riding the bike, and then we're also going to do a stopped animation too, so that he doesn't look like he's pedaling when he's in place. Let's go ahead and get started with our bike. All right, so I have a fresh base plate right here, and the first thing I need to do is find something that looks kind of like a bike. All right, so I'm going to go to my toolbox, and then I have the marketplace models. I'm going to search for BMX bike. I have bike BMX. That'll work too. And I found this one here. It has 40% likes. So I thought, that's interesting. I wonder why. I drug it into the workspace. I found out why. There's no scripts, right? Bikes are complicated. And people want to get a bike and just get on and ride it. So people were selecting this bike and it wasn't working. But it's good for us, right? Because it's spare parts. If you look inside the bike model, you'll see, ooh, red bike accessory. This is brilliant. Let's make the bike an accessory and then we can just attach it to our character and run around with the bike. So the handle is actually a mesh part. If you can't find that bike, don't worry. I uploaded it to my account. I'll put this link in the description. It's the exact same thing I just drug out. This will say get model, you press it, and then it will show up in your toolbox under inventory as bike. There we go. So now we got a bike. We're going to have to do a few things with this bike though. We don't want it in a model. Let's grab that bike, red bike accessory, put it in the workspace, and then let's get rid of the bike model. We're not going to need that. Now, if we look at our red bike accessory, we have our handle, and this is body back attachment. What is this going to look like if we put it on something? Let's go to our avatar tab. And then we'll go to Rig Builder. Should I make myself? Yeah, my avatar. I'm an R15. Looking good. Let's go ahead and drag our red bike accessory into this rig and see how it attaches. Ah, oh, bummer. That's not quite right, right? But that's a good starting point. You might want them to carry around a bike. Let's open up the bike attachment under the handle, or the bike accessory under the handle, ooh, body back attachment. Well, now it's making more sense. So if we go down to our character's body parts, let's look at lower torso. We want to ride this bike, right? Open up lower, lower torso. Let's check out waist center attachment. Click on it, and then I'm going to copy that name, control C. I'm going to go back to my bike accessory and I think I'm going to drag it outside of my rig for now while I change the attachment, right? Because that might have funny results, All right? So I pulled it into the workspace, I'm going to open it back up, go to handle, and then instead of body back attachment, I am going to paste in waist center attachment. It has to be spelt right. All right, now let's drag it back into the rig and it should use the proper attachment. Whoops, it's under body colors. Put it under rig. Boom, look at that. Well, it's getting closer, right? It's getting closer. It's not quite there. That's all right. Let's open this up. This is red bike accessory under the rig. Open the handle. Take a look at our waist center attachment. Let's zero these values out under the C-frame. So I'm going to say zero, zero, zero for the position under the C-frame. I'm going to do zero, comma, zero, comma, zero for the orientation. All right, well, it's a little bit straighter. All right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my rotate. And remember, you have to rotate opposite the, the direction that you want the handle to move on the attachment. So I'm going to rotate to my right, the bike is going to rotate to the left. Look at that. Looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab our move. And I want the seat to be down a little bit. Oops, opposite direction, right? Go up. There we go. You might have to change your, your move. I have it on 
0.1 studs. That's working. And now I want the bike to go forward a little bit, so I'm going to push back, right? Opposite direction. Right? Because the attachment's staying still. So if you want the bike to move, you got to move the attachment in the opposite direction. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think we're ready to do some animations now. Make sure your avatar tab is selected and then let's hit animation editor. Start working on our animation. It says select the rig. All right, that'll work. Let's go ahead and call it ride. Sweet. Hit these three dots. We're gonna go to set animation priority action. We wanna override our walk and run. I'm gonna hit these three dots again. I'm gonna hit save. And now he has some animation to do, right? We need to get those legs. Let's move the leg up. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. So I have this on 15 degree increments. That should be at about 75 degree angle. Oh, it is good. And get the lower leg. I think I'll knock that down. One, two, three, four, five, six. What's six give us? Right lower leg. 105, let's go a little bit a little bit more. 120, good. They have to match up on both sides. That's why I care. One, two. 30 degree angle on the foot. All right, now on the other leg, let's grab that thigh. If you'll notice that little blue thing, I don't know if your if your rotations aren't like mine. If you hit control L, it'll make it go away. That is whether you want to rotate relative to the part or relative to the world. I like the little L there, right? Local rotation mode. All right, so this one here, I'm just gonna pop it up like 15 degrees. And then the lower leg, I'm gonna pop that back 45. One, two, three. Get that butt. And one, two, that's at 30 degrees. Nice. All right, now we want keyframes on anything that might move while we're running including lower torso. So let's grab that lower torso there and I wanna put a keyframe there. I'm just pushing on it and then pushing back. That'll put a keyframe to keep things in place. Same with upper torso. You may wanna have them leaning over or something, that'd be pretty cool. But I'm just gonna straighten them out. Head, you don't want the head bouncing around too. Can we get the head? We might not be able to get the head because I got hair on them. Oh no, I got it. There we go. Oh yeah, let's have them looking down. That'll be pretty cool. All right, now we gotta get the arms. Every joint on the arm. So we're gonna move that arm up. I don't know, one. One should do it. That bike's pretty small. Let's move it in maybe. Well, let's try the lower. All right, let's move this up. See what we got. One, two, three, four. Cool. Oh, we gotta move it in. How about one, two. That's looking good. Let's get the hand. Ooh, that looks that looks brutal. Let's get the hand again. I lost it. I'm gonna go green. Not bad. Maybe move this out. Cool. All right, other arm, right? Other arm. Red. What do we go? One. Lower arm. One, two, three. Was that it? So we go one or two. We went one. Let's go one more, one more click. Boom. All right, now we're gonna move it in. What do we do, two? I know this is brutal for you guys. You're like, no, you did one. It's all right. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? I like it like that. I don't think we're gonna get it any closer to that in a video. And the time is a, is a constraint, right? So it looks like he's riding a bike. But we need to have a little cycle, right? So I'm going to get these keyframes. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy selected. Maybe go out to the ninth frame right here. This is under seconds frames for the timeline, right? Timeline units, second frames. All right, we'll put it at the ninth frame. I have it at 30 frames per second. Cool. And then let's go out to like the 18th. And paste again, right? Paste, paste. This one's gonna be a little different, right? We're gonna loop it. So this one and this one has to be the same. So we're gonna loop this one. All we have to do is change the feet. 
All right, so this leg, I'm going to drop this down. I don't know, one, two, three, I don't know, it's four, like that. I think that's good. And then we'll grab this right here. Oh, lower leg. What do we have lower leg at? Like 45 degrees? We're going to have to check it. That is the right lower leg. Right lower leg. I got that at 75. We need it. We need it at about 45. I wrote them down. There we go. Foot's good. We don't have to worry about the foot. This leg we're going to have to bring up a little bit. Is that 75? That is my left upper leg. Left upper leg. 75, good. Up, oh, lower leg. What do we got? Left lower leg. Should be what? Negative 120? Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. All right, let's try it out. Let's hit the, the loop and then we'll play. Yeah, that's not bad. Looking good. Let's save it off. All right, we'll stop it. We'll pause it. Hit those three dots. We're going to save it. And I'm going to publish it right now too, right? Publish to Roblox. We've got a ride animation. We'll hit submit. Now remember, we're going to need this number. Let's go ahead and click on it. I'm going to close so it's copied. That number's copied. That's the ID, the animation ID. I am going to do this stuff on client side just so that it's cleaner. So I'm going to go to my starter GUI, hit the plus, screen GUI, hit the plus, text button, hit the plus, and then I'm going to add a local script. On the local script, I'm going to add an animation the animation I'm going to call ride. And then I'm going to go to my animation ID on the ride. Control V. Oh, there's a number. Sweet. All right, what else? While we're here, let's go back to our animation and get the still pose. That's going to be easy. So we have our, our ride animation. We are going to do save as let's do new let's call this still save basically i'm just going to click this key this set of keyframes i'm going to right click and i'm going to delete i'm going to select this i'm going to delete all right i'm going to make sure that my animation priority is action i'm going to save it says still, hit the three dots, publish to Roblox, hit my submit, ID, copy it, close, go on down here to starter GUI, screen GUI, text button, local script, hit the plus, hit an A, animation, still. Whew, there you go, right? And now we're going to go animation ID, control V. There you go. We got it. All right. So this one is what? Two ends in 214. This one ends in 225. All right. Now we're ready to start doing some coding. We're going to, we're going to load the animations into our player. All right, so one thing you got to keep in mind with these animations is the ID you get back from Roblox you can only use it under your account. So you can't use my ID right here. You have to publish your animation off under your account so that you can use it. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and get started on our button. I'm gonna close this. I wanna rename my button. I'm gonna call this bike button. All right, we'll go ahead and move this down a little bit. I'm not gonna decorate it a lot. But enough that it makes sense. Uh, I'm going to go down to text. Here we go. And I'm going to call it bike, call bike. How about that? Call bike. 
And then text scale, make it a little bigger. Uh, you know, I'll change the font. Go up here. Yeah, make it bangers. Cool. That should work. All right, let's go down to our local script. And I think I'll call this call bike loke. And I want to get a squeak sound too. So I'm going to go over to my toolbox. I have audio selected under marketplace. I am going to search for uh, what I have bike squeaking bike. I tried this one. Now I'm going to pause the video while I find a nice squeak because I know you don't want to sit here and watch all that. So I found this metal squeak for I like it. I select the, the script right here, call bike loc, hit the insert. It's going to plop it down right there. Let's go ahead and close this. I'll go ahead and play this for you. Yeah, go down here. That's not bad. Let's make it a little bit faster though. Oh, and we'll loop it too. And that way we can just turn it on and off with our code. So playback speed, I think I'll make that two. Cool. Let's play it again. Hit the green button. Yeah, that sounds like a good bike squeak. You can play around with them, right? The sound's not going to be that challenging. Let's open up our call bike loc. Since this local script is going to be talking to the server, I want to destroy the bike and clone the bike server side, not client side. I'm going to need a remote event. So let's go to replicated storage right up here real quick. Hit the plus add a remote event. And this is the gateway between the client and the server so that my local script can talk to my server scripts. I'm going to call this bike R E. There we go. We're going to go back over to our call bike loc script. I'm going to make that a little bigger so you can see it. I'm going to get a reference to that replicated storage. So I'll do a local RS short for replicated storage game get service replicated storage. I think I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. Is that good? And then we'll do the bike RE, get a variable for our bike RE, replicated storage, wait for child, bike RE. And let's get our button reference. That's just a script.parent. Cool. I always get that X in there. And then we'll do a flag for whether the bike is being ridden or not. And we will start out with false. I, I want to get my player service. I'll just say players game get service players and then I'll get a local player I'll just call it player and we'll do players dot local player remember this only works on client scripts but that's all right local scripts are client scripts and then let's get our char from our player so char is the character right so we'll get the player dot character or player dot character added weight just in case the character's not ready which is what you're going to need because this uh this gui is going to get cloned and it's going to take a while before the character enters the game it's going to be cloned when the character enters the game that's why we call it a starter gui right so you will need this right so it'll pause all right the character's ready what are we going to need from the character we're going to need a humanoid root part right so let's say char wait for child humanoid root part and that's going to be for the sound i think we're only going to use that for the sound actually and then we're going to get the humanoid char oh man char wait for child humanoid and then what else do we need Ooh, let's get our sound right Ooh, we need to get the running sound too because i'm going to override the walk so this is r15 use walk on R6, I believe. Sometimes I forget. So we have our running sound. I think I'll call it run sound. Run. How about like that? All right, we're going to get that from the humanoid root part. We'll do a wait for child running because we want to that tap, tap, tap. We're going to turn that off and change it to the squeak sound. But I want to get the original volume because we're not going to turn it off. We're just going to really crank it down. So get the volume of the run sound, save it off for when we're actually not on the bike, right? And then let's get our squeak sound. Squeak, script, 
and we have it on the script so we'll do a wait for child and what do we call it oh look at that metal squeak four what else Ooh, ride animation got that x in there again ride animation we'll call it ride anim that is also on the script script wait for child ride almost there let's get a couple more though we need our still anim still anim script wait for child still let me go ahead and move the code a little bit we're going to need our animator from our character so i'll say animator and that would be from the humanoid right wait for child animator they don't help you with that one yet we'll get our ride track right may as well load that up ride track animator load animation whoops and that's just the ride animation ride anim we'll get our still track so that when you're just sitting on the bike right animator load animation still anim all right now remember the button is going to call the bike so let's go ahead and get our button activated connect whoops connect function nothing gets passed in those parameters we're going to have our flag the flags indicating whether we're on the bike or not whether we're riding or not so flag will equal not flag every time we hit the button we're going to switch state so we're either going to be on a bike or not on a bike as far as that button is concerned so this is going to start out at false then we're going to go to true We'll do an if statement, if flag, so if it's true, then let's go ahead and scroll a little bit. We'll get our bike RE fired off on the server side. We're gonna have to clone that. That's gonna be pretty simple though. Most of the work is gonna be in this script. And then we can get our run sound, turn that down, right? This is the pitter patter of the feet because we're gonna be on a bike, but we're still going to be moving like we're running, except for our animations and stuff. Roblox is going to think you're running. And I don't think I'll put anything in there yet. We might want to momentarily stop him. Yeah, let's do that. Let's momentarily stop him when he goes to get the get on the bike. So we'll say walk speed equals zero. We will wait. And then whatever the old walk speed was, I will assume it's default for now. So the default walk speed is 16. That'll just give a like a little bit of a a pause when you go to put on the bike. All right, now we'll get our else. We are going to send another event because now we're off the bike. It's it's false. Let's say fire fire server. Let's send the flag. Make sure we know whether we want to destroy or clone. Right here, here we're destroying the bike. Here, on the server side, we're going to say clone the bike. All right, so then we'll get our run sound volume and we'll put it back to the old volume. We'll get our squeak. Notice I didn't start the squeak on the flag. Hold on. So we'll get the squeak and we'll stop it because we, we stopped riding the bike. We're going to get our still track. And we're going to stop that. So this is the fade time. I'll put a zero in. And then we're also in case we're riding. So we could have been standing still. We could have been riding. We were on the bike. Like I say riding the bike, but we could have just been stopped on the bike. We'll get the ride track. We'll stop that. All right. So bikes going away. Anything related to the bike, we have to stop. Even though we didn't start it up over here. This is how we're going to start our squeak and our ride and stuff like that. We're going to come down here and the humanoid has a running event, right? So even though we're on a bike, the uh, Roblox character is still going under the other animation assumptions. We're overriding the walk animation or run animation, right? So running is an event 
passes in speed when something changes. So if you change speed, you stop, you start running. This is going to be like 16 when you start. It's going to be zero when you stop. So let's check to see if our flag is saying we have a bike. If we do have a bike, speed greater than zero, oh, we're riding, right? Then we're going to get our squeak. We'll play that. We're going to get our still track. And then we'll stop that because we're no longer uh, we're no longer still. We're going to get our ride. Where's our ride track? Ride track. We'll play that. Let me scroll a little. Then we'll get an else. Ah, we're stopped, but we're on a bike. This is going to be very similar. Let's just let's just cheat a little bit. Control C. Control V. This is going to be stop for the squeak. For the still track, this will be play. Get rid of the zero. And then for the ride, we'll stop. Right, so we came in there. Oh, we'll put a little fade of zero, no fade. So when we're running and we're on a bike, we're gonna do stuff, right? If we're going somewhere, we're gonna play the squeak, play the uh, ride track, stop the still, and then the opposite down here. Now the one little glitch, and you'd wanna deal with that in here, is if I hit my jump key, um, this is gonna fire, and if I'm riding, we're gonna play. But that's all right. I think that's fine. You could probably figure that out. Or you could just turn the jump off on the humanoid, right? We can do that too. We could use use jump power and then set jump power to zero for a second. Now remember, we don't have a bike. We're just going to have our animation. That's pretty good, right? All we have to do is put a bike on them. Almost there. Let's go ahead and stop this. I'm going to go to server script service, hit the plus, add a script, and we're gonna call this um, give bike. How about that? Give bike. Now to give the bike, we're gonna to have to have that bike in either replicated storage or server storage. Server storage is only for server side, replicated, you could do both, give it to the client or you could, you could use it on the server side. Let's do replicated storage. Let's go ahead and grab our bike. We'll do a copy. We'll leave that bike out there for now. And then replicated storage, paste into, we have our red bike accessory right here. Let's get a reference to our replicated storage. There we go, local. RS, short for replicated storage, game get service, replicated storage. And then we're going to get a reference to our bike remote event because we got to catch that. We got to catch that remote event coming over. Bike RE. I'll go to here and do a bike RE on server event. We're going to catch the on server event connect that to a function. Now the player is going to be the first argument because you're catching a client side server, your client side remote event. And then is writing was that flag. Probably should have called it that on the client side too. I'm going to get the character. I'll call it char. We'll say player dot character or player dot character added wait in case the character's not ready it's probably going to be fine here and then we'll say if is riding then let's get our bike local bike equals replicated storage wait for child hey you want to just clump, uh chain these together we'll get our red bike accessory and then we'll clone it i usually don't like to do uh, multiple things on one line but i'll, I'll do it on that one all right, then we got to get our humanoid. Char equals wait for child. Humanoid. 
Then we're going to get the humanoid and we're going to add accessory. That's a colon right there, right? Add accessory. Bike. What else? Well, that is writing could be false. So we'll do local bike. And then we got to look for it in the character. Char, find first child. Well, we know the name, right? Red bike accessory. We're hard coding that. We're using a literal here. So if you change the name of your bike, you're going to run into trouble. But I think it's fine for the video. All right. So let's just make sure it's spelled right. Control C, Control V. Yeah, it's spelled good. All right. So if the bike exists, I'm just going to make sure we found it. Then we'll destroy the bike. All right, let's try it out. I think we're good. Hit play. All right, we're going to call our bike. Here we go. And I'll hit the W key. Nice. Now, you could do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, put some effects in here to make it look like the wheels are moving. Now, the jump does mess things up. So you should probably turn the jump off on the humanoid. I do that client side. Because if we do a jump... That running is going to fire, right? And then it'll be okay if we're going forward. But it's going to be in a weird state, right? You can get rid of the bike too. But uh, the jump is just going to be a little bit tricky. Not big problem. And also, we don't have an angle of the bike. You would need ray casting for that. And then modify the attachment of the accessory based on the normal angle of the ray hitting the object. A little bit further down the road there outside the scope of this video. But you can see it when you go over stuff, right? You can see how it just kind of pops up. It doesn't go on an angle. I think that's all right, though. I like this bike. It's a good intro bike. Get rid of the bike. We run. Grab the bike. We're riding. All right. I will see you in the next video.